Hello, in this episode we will be making a rusty barrel and this is practicing UV unwrapping. Do make sure you've had a look at my beginners video about unwrapping and I'll place a card in the corner now and there'll be a link in the description. This will hopefully be a continuing series so there should be more after this as well of more complex shapes to unwrap and hopefully that will make up an unwrapping course. This is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go from beginner right through to advanced levels and all the courses are free. So let's get straight to it. Here's my startup scene. I'm using 2.79. This will work just as well in 2.8. So you should be able to follow along in the same way. Just the menus will be in slightly different places. I'm going to get rid of the timeline at the bottom by moving over to this line and right clicking and join area. And then I'll move the arrow downwards and that will move this window downwards. Okay, so I'm going to delete the default cube and shift A to add cylinder. The default cylinder of 32 vertices is good, so we'll leave it like that. You can also add the cylinder by coming down to here and going to add mesh cylinder. Okay, so let's zoom into our cylinder. You can press full stop on the numpad and that will center your viewport around the object. Now it's not quite barrel shaped yet, so I'm going to scale in the Z axis. So S then Z and there we've got more of a barrel shape. Now that's important. What I just did there was I scaled my object. So if I press N and get my tool panel on the side here, you can see that the scale is slightly different to 111, which would be the sort of natural scale. It's 11 and 1.5 in the Z axis. That's important for later. So try and remember that. I'm going to bring across by clicking on these three lines here, another window and I'm going to change this to the UV image editor and I'll bring down another window and change that to the node editor and I press N and N to get rid of those two panels. I'm going to make sure I'm in cycles and I'm going to create a new material. I'm not going to worry about the type of material for the moment because we're just thinking about unwrapping. So I'm going to go shift A texture image texture and then I'm going to open my texture. This is a texture I've created and I've put it in a Google Drive for you. The link is in the description. So there's my texture. I'm just going to show it in here as well. So there's my rusty barrel texture. And lastly, let's hook it up. Now I can't see it in here for two reasons. One, I'm not in textured mode. So I can come down here and change it to textured. It's still not showing me anything. That's because I haven't unwrapped it. But before I unwrap it, I'd like to make this model a bit smarter by perhaps putting a bevel around the edge here so it's not so sharp and maybe where these bits stick out I'll actually put a bit of geometry in just to make it a tiny bit harder for ourselves to unwrap otherwise it'd be very easy. So I'll go back into solid mode just while I'm making those edits. Tab into edit mode. I'm going to go into edge mode and select the top group of vertices with alt right click and holding shift and alt and then right clicking select the bottom ones as well. Now if I press control B I can bevel them. I only want a slight bevel, so I'll just move my mouse out really slightly and I'll use my wheel once to give it a new segment in the middle. Then I'll left click. You can change these things here as well in the bevel controls. There's the amount of segments and that's the amount of bevel, so the distance. I'm also going to create two ridges here and here. So control R and then I'll use my wheel, push it up once and to create two loop cuts like that. And I'm going to bevel these as well. So control B to bevel and about that sort of distance and use my wheel to create another segment in the middle and left click. And I'll alt right click on this one to select that edge loop and shift alt right click to select that one. And I'm going to scale it up. But if I press scale now, you can see it scales around the middle point. That's not what I want. I want them to scale around their own individual origins. I can come down here and change it to individual origins. Then I can scale and they are scaling just outwards based on their own origins. Lastly, I'll select the face up the top and inset that very slightly with I and then extrude it and pull it downwards very slightly and that will create a cap. And the same for the bottom. Okay, so now I need to unwrap. I have got a huge end gone at the top here and at the bottom. That's not important. That's a completely flat surface and that will be fine. So let's go to edge mode in order to do our unwrapping. And when creating seams, you need to think about where the obvious edges are because wherever there are seams, you're likely to see a change in the texture. So they kind of need to be hidden wherever possible. 
A good place to hide the seams is where there's a natural break in the material. So around here would be a very good place to mark a seam. So I've Alt right clicked on one of those lines, press Control E and mark seam. You can see it turns orange. That means my seam is marked there. The other obvious place would be at the bottom here. So I'll select that loop at the bottom, Control E and then mark seams. So I've got two loops. Let's see what happens if I unwrap it now. I'll select all and press U to unwrap. And for some reason I've got three circles. You can see the top and the bottom caps there, but this seems to be the middle section. Now what I haven't done is marked a seam down the side to cut this up. So think about a label going around this cylinder, like a Coke bottle or a baked bean can or something like that. It has a seam down one side where the label attaches to itself. That's what we need to do here. It's trying to unwrap them without that line and it's doing it in a really unusual fashion. So let's select one of these loops just there with Alt right click, Control E and mark seams. Now when I select all and press U to unwrap, it unwraps it as I'd expect. The only one tiny thing if I press Shift spacebar on this window to go into full screen mode, you can see that there's a slight slope. That is because we're using angle based instead of conformal. If I change the conformal, that should go fairly straight now. Conformal tends to be for geometric shapes and it will do this sort of thing, straighten things out, whereas angle based is better for organic, generally speaking. Now there's one other problem here and it's hardly noticeable, but if I press U to unwrap again and press unwrap, it says object has non-uniform scale. Unwrap will operate on non-scaled version. So if I press N and I'll go to object mode, it's because the scale is not all at one. I need to reset this object scale. And to do that, I need to press Control A in object mode and reset the scale. That's a really common problem for beginners and it can solve an awful lot of problems. It's really important to set your scale before you unwrap. Now when I go to edit mode, press U to unwrap and unwrap. You can see this has become slightly elongated now to coincide with the scale in the Z axis that I did. Now we just need to move these into position. The easiest way for this one is if I move my toolbar across using the middle mouse button, I have these options here. There's vertex, edges, faces, and islands. If I click on the islands and then right click on one of these, you can see it's selecting the whole island. Islands are where the seams break an object. So you can see there's a complete island here because it's separate from all the other objects by its seams. So I can then press G to grab, move that into position, scale it up. Same for this one, G to grab. I'll make it more accurate in a second. And the last one, G to grab and move them into position. Let's see how that's looking in our viewport by going to textured mode. If for any reason this is the wrong way up, you would then be able to rotate this object 180 degrees and that flips them all around. But I'm just going to undo that because that hasn't happened here. Let's just look at the top and bottom. They look fine. Let's deselect everything and just double check. And it's all looking pretty good, but there is a very slight problem. When I made this texture, I had my loop cuts just slightly higher in this case and very slightly higher there too. So let's select all again, move into our object. I'll press shift space bar to go full screen so we can see it a bit closer. And the lines I want to change, if I click using Alt right click and Shift Alt right click to select these three, I can then grab them in the Y axis because this is two dimensional, so Y is going upwards and that's more like the middle there. And then these three, Alt right click, Shift Alt right click the other two, grab in the Y axis and just move it up gently. And in fact, my whole texture needed to be moved up really slightly. So if I grab the whole lot, grab in the Y axis, move it up, you can see the non-conformal unwrap hasn't done a perfect job here as there's a slight slope. I'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment. But here we can now alt right click and select these three and move them back into position. Somewhere around here. And that one looks okay to me. Lastly, there's a bit of green coming through at the bottom here. So alt right click and shift to select the other ones. Grab in the Y axis, move it up around there looks good. It does seem to slope upwards really slightly so I can rotate these just a touch to about there. 
I think that will suit us a bit better. Grab in the Y axis, just move it down a touch. That's looking good. OK, let's try and sort these ones out just a touch. We can grab that and scale it up just a touch more to make the most out of this texture. Same with this one. Scale it up and move it into position. Shift spacebar to go back into full screen mode. And let's go Shift Z for render mode. We need a light in there really, so I'll go Shift Z again. Click on my light and change it to a sun. So over here in the lighting tab, I'll change it to a sun. And I'll point it the other way. So I'll go to top view and rotate it round. So it actually points at our barrel a bit better. Click on our barrel, move into a barrel with full stop on the numpad and Shift Z. And that's not looking too bad. The only other problem is that it's not smooth shading. So let's change it to smooth shading. And that looks pretty good at the moment. But it's not quite right at the top here. It looks like this is a bowl shape. And what we can do, if you watch my chess piece tutorial, is turn on the auto smooth under the object data tab just here. So auto smooth, that will set all the angles that are above 30 degrees to smooth. So we've got a hard edge in there. And at the bottom, we've got nice and smooth around here. And lastly, you might want to change your shader to, to the principal shader. If you have the Node Wrangler installed, you can just press Shift S over the shader and press Shader, Principled. Or you have to find your principal shader in here, Add, Shader, Principal Shader, which is in the middle. And then you can mess around with the roughness and metallic and all sorts to make it look a bit more interesting. What you might like to do if you've been watching my Node School tutorials is to add a very slight bump. That way you can put the roughness up a bit in terms of keeping it glossy, but a slight bump will break that up. I'll show you what I mean. So in the Node Editor, I'll just shift spacebar to make that bigger. Shift A to add a vector bump. Then bring the color into the height information and the normal into the normal. I'll shift spacebar to go back and we should see a slight bump. The only problem with this approach is that you will get a bump on all of your graphic and it's not ideal. We can bring the strength right down so there's just a partial bump and that should help us to break up the material a bit and then I'll bring the roughness up just a touch to somewhere around there and it's just got a bit more texture to it than it did before. It's not the best way of course of adding a bump and you should really create a normal map based on perhaps a sculpted object, or you can paint on a bump yourself, and thereby being far more accurate with the bump information. But for now, that gives us enough to practice our UV image editing. OK, so that was a simple unwrap with a few tips there for you. Do look out for the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching, and I hope that helps.